Hi, I'm Gareth Pronovost and I am an Airtable consultant. In this video, I'm going to be going into a deep dive on the Airtable forms view. Specifically, we're going to create a form and embed it on a website so that we can collect customer data directly from the source and have that automatically entered into our Airtable base. But before we get started, just real quick plug, uh, if you have any custom Airtable work that you'd like a uh, little assistance on, I do offer a free consultation and I will include a link to uh, my calendar of below in the description. But without further ado, let's jump on into this video. Welcome to Entrepreneurship by the Numbers, where we help unlock the potential of your business with data-driven metrics. Okay, so jumping into Airtable here, this is our uh, beginning base. And this is the grid view. This is kind of the default view for Airtable. And I think most people are probably familiar with this because it's very similar to Excel. Uh, so what you'll see here is we are creating a customer service ticket um, entry for our website. So the idea here is uh, if for this example that people will come to our website and they say, you know, they want to create a new ticket for some customer service issue. And so we want to collect the data around that ticket. So jumping into the uh, grid view, we've got a ticket number formula here that is automatically generating. Uh, we have the auto number, and this is just a ticker that counts you know, one after another after every record. Uh, we'll, we'll have a customer entry where they can enter their name, email, and phone number in three different fields. We have a date timestamp that's automatically creating. Uh, we have a priority list where the customer can select high priority, medium, or low. We have an attachments where they could, you know, say attach screenshots or something like that. Uh, you know, notes section where they could add more description. And then these last three fields are things that we would use like for our team where, uh, you know, when did we complete this, uh, this ticket and what internal notes do we have as, you know, our team members, you know, knocked this out. And then we would have, you know, our team members could add themselves to these tickets and, you know, claim them. Uh, saying like, hey, I'm going to you know, take care of that one. So if you're managing a big team, this is a great way to kind of build this all out so that everybody has access and, uh, and knows what uh, their responsibilities are and also so that managers know, you know who's handling what. So this is what the standard form in grid view is going to look like. So then jumping into the different views, you know, we can create different types of views in Airtable here. We've got grid, form, calendar, gallery, Kanban. And so for this particular one, we have the form view and you'll see that I've already created the customer support ticket form. And this is all really simple. It's using the same fields that are created in the other form or in the, uh, in the grid view. And we're just putting them on the form. And a couple of things that we can do in the form view is just, you know, click drag. So if we wanted to add the completed date time, we could, you know, just drag that over from the side. Of course, I don't want that. This is an internal uh, metric, so I don't want that on there. Um, other things you can do is either make a field required or not. You can hide a field here if you so choose. And then you'll see that this part right here, this is the actual field name in Airtable. This is what we called the field on our grid view, but you could change that here to say something completely different. Enter your name, for example, is something that you know, we could change that to. And it doesn't change the actual field name. As you see, field name is still your name. It's just the description that's going here. There could also be some extra text that you add here below as well. You'll see that I've already set a lot of these to be uh, required fields. So name, email, phone number, of course we need this information. I don't want them submitting a ticket without that information. Um, and then of course I need to know, you know, what's the priority of the ticket. And then if they want to attach any supporting documents, I want that on there. And then the description of the issue and the, uh, the date completed time, this uh, we don't want up here. So we want to hide that. You get down to the bottom of the form and you'll see a bunch of different options here. We can get rid of that Airtable branding if we want to, or we can include it either way. Um, and then you can choose a redirect so that after the form is submitted, you can send them automatically to another URL. Uh, so if you had, you know, a uh, reason to do that, great. Uh, you've got a, a, you know, a thank, a thanking message, you know, the message that you show them after they've submitted. Uh, you can give them the option to submit another response. You can automatically generate a new blank form after five seconds, or you can require that you get emailed a notification that a new record was created. This is an important one, I think, for any customer service type team. So I've selected this option. 
So now getting into the sharing of the form, you've got a couple of options. You could just create a share of that form here and you know you can have, you have different uh, accesses that you can grant people, restricting it with a password, for example, or restrict it to an email domain. But if you just wanted to have a, a really basic and easy um, you know, link to share, you could just share this link and now people could enter from that form. But I think the better option in many cases is to actually embed this form on your website, on your company website. So let's go ahead and grab that. So we click on embed form and you see that we have uh, some code right here. This is the embed code. So most of websites these days are uh, generally uh, built around WordPress. So that's what I'm going to be showing in this example. So jumping into a WordPress example, we go to our pages and we just add a new page. And while that's thinking, uh, let's call this page customer support. And on the uh, text version, we're just going to drop in that, um, that code that we picked up from that Airtable, uh, uh, that Airtable link just a moment ago. We can go ahead and publish this and it's really this simple. All we're doing is embedding this code on a blank page and uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump out of Airtable and instead go visit this particular part. So there we are, uh, the customer support uh, page that we created now you see is just, I mean, it's that simple, created now with this ticket uh, ability to enter data. So let's go ahead and test this out and make sure it's working. So we'll create a fake ticket here. Uh, this is my name. And we just have to you know, fill out all of the requirements here. We did not make this required and we didn't make this required. So let's submit that. It says, thank you for submitting the form. Fantastic. And now if we jump back into our Airtable grid view, you see that we've created that new one. Now this data was entered automatically uh, just from that form that was just embedded on our website. And there you see it's popping up in my email. It's telling me that someone's given us a new ticket. So that it, everything is working correctly and it's looking pretty good. All right, as always, I hope you found this to be super helpful. If you enjoy this kind of content, definitely click subscribe and don't forget to reach out if you have any questions or comments. In the meantime, best of luck as you continue to grow your empire. Mm -hmm.